Okay, hello everyone. Let me start. As we planned, today we go through exams that don't have solution sketch on front row. Yeah? And this is the first one that we solve today. Mm -hmm. So let we begin then. In the beer market in Norway, there is a price war going on between five brewery companies. And there are only a few big companies and we assume we have a Bertrand game in differentiated products between companies competing over prices with these demand functions. And in the beginning we have uh, identical costs for both. Yeah? So first we start solving Bertrand game with differentiated products. Mm -hmm. Something that we have not done on the last lecture. Mm -hmm. So this is A. marginal cost 1 equal to marginal cost 2 and equal to 10. Well, who can tell me where should I start solving such exercise? Hmm? Exactly. In order to solve any problem of this type, I always want to find marginal revenues of both firms. Huh? When I find marginal revenue, I equate it to marginal cost, and actually I'm done. Mm -hmm. So first thing always is to understand how can I do that. So what about this demand function? The problem here is that it's not a straightforward task, task now to apply twice a steep rule. Mm -hmm. In order to apply twice a steep rule, I have to have inverse demand function. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure that my Q is on the right hand side of my equation. Mm -hmm. So in order to get an inverse demand function for firm 1, I should sort of change the places of these two elements. Mm -hmm. This one should be on the left hand side, this one on the right, like that. So P1 is equal to 100 minus half Q1 plus P divided by 2. Mm -hmm. From here, now I can apply marginal, uh, marginal revenue rule, twice as triple, right? So th that will be marginal revenue from 1 is equal to 100 minus Q1, I multiply that by 2, and plus P2 to 2. Mm -hmm. And now I can equate it to marginal costs this equal to 10. From here I can express Q1 and this will be equal to 90 plus P2 to 2. Mm -hmm. But I remember that my best, respon best response curve for the case of Bertrand game should be something like my price with response to the price of another uh, player. Mm -hmm. So in order to find best response curve, I should find relationship between two prices. But here I have a relationship between Q and prices. Mm -hmm. What should I do? Go back to demand function. Mm -hmm. Right. So I have Q1 here and Q1 here. Actually, I can just equate it to this part of the equation. Huh? That will be 200 minus 2P1 plus P2. Mm -hmm. Now you see that at the moment, I have a relationship between prices. Mm -hmm. If I rearrange that, I can find a relationship between P1 and P2. Mm -hmm. So in, in this case, it will be P1 equal to 55 plus 1 over 4 P2. This is best response curve of first player. Um, for those of you who have good relationship with uh, derivatives, with derivation. 
uh, there is a bit simpler way not to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. I will show you, but if you don't like it, just don't bother then, for those who, who are comfortable with this stuff. Um, what is the purpose of firm 1, say? The purpose is to maximize profit. Mm -hmm. So I can immediately start with profit expression. So profit of first firm would be, say this will be Q, multiplied by price minus marginal costs and minus fixed costs, right? Mm? Q I have right here. So I can just use this here. Mm -hmm. It will be 200 minus 2P1 plus P2. Mm -hmm. This is this Q. And multiply it by this bracket. P1 minus marginal cost 1, or, OK, minus 10 immediately, and minus some fixed cost. In this case, yes, at the moment, it, it can be 0. So we just forget about that. Uh, then, in order to maximize profit, I should find first derivative of profit with respect to the uh, variable, to the uh, variable of interest here. Yeah? And my variable of interest is price. So I have to find uh, first derivative of price with respect to price. Mm -hmm. What it will be? That will be 200 minus 4p1 plus p2 and plus 20, right? Mm, I can actually uh, write more. 200p1 plus 2p1 to the square plus p2 p1 minus uh, 2000 plus 20 p1 and plus minus 10 p2, right? Now look, I go and take derivative with respect to p1. This is equal to 200, this is 4p1, this is p2, yeah, because now it is constant, it's not a variable, only this is variable. This is 0, this is 20, this is 0, right? So how I find maximum? I equate the derivative to 0, Deri yeah, right? So from here now, look, uh, it will be 4p1 equal to 220 plus p2. Mm -hmm. p1 is equal to 55 plus p2 over 4. Mm -hmm. So, but here, instead of going back and forth from demand function to marginal revenue, then back to demand function, you can go straight ahead to the profit maximization, and we get best response, or best response function. Mm -hmm. So if you're OK with derivation, this probably a shorter way. And actually, this logic, yeah, it's just another way of, d of deriving best response function. Actually, uh, this story with profit will work with any game, with Cournot equilibrium, with Bertrand game. Uh, it doesn't matter. It always works. Um, OK. So we have found best response function best response f curve for firm 1. Now we do the same for f firm 2. Um, I will go quickly. Immediately, OK, we, re we rearrange this, get uh, inverse demand function, find marginal revenue. And this one will be 75 minus Q2 plus half of P1 and is equal to 10. Mm -hmm. From here we get Q2 equal to 65 plus 1 half P1. Mm -hmm. uh, we get this Q2, go back to demand function and get from here best response curve 42.5 plus 1 quarter P1, right? Uh, now I have two best response curve curves. And I can find Nash equilibrium. Hmm? I find crossing between these two. I think there's no need to write that, right? This is just algebra. And from here I will get 
my P1 equal to 70 and P2 will be equal to 60. Mm -hmm. From here I can find both quantities. Um, Q1 will be 120 and Q2 will be 100. Mm -hmm. So what does mean discuss the solution figures? Well, mm -hmm. I don't know what to discuss here, actually. Um, it only looks like, okay, price and demand for first firm will be higher, but it can be actually derived exactly from these two figures. Yeah, We can expect that numbers here should be higher than numbers here. That's it. Mm -hmm. Uh, B. Both companies do exactly cover fixed costs in this Bitrun game. Find the fixed cost for the two companies. Is this a successful strategies, strategy? What does it mean? It means that there is no profit in this game. Mm -hmm. So they just exactly cover. It means that uh, what we can find here that will be called profit is actually not a profit. This is fixed costs. Mm -hmm. So profit of firm one, or here I would say that this is actually fixed costs, because profit is equal to zero. Um, it will be 120 quantity produced multiplied by difference between price and marginal costs. This is equal, equal to 7,200, right? Fixed cost two is equal to 5,000. Mm -hmm. This is question B. Now, company one now invests 10% of fixed costs in increased productivity and marginal costs are reduced to 9. Company two invests 20% of fixed costs and marginal costs are reduced to 8. Will this strategy increase profits for the two companies? Discuss the new Nash equilibrium figures. So here we, d we just uh, repeat the calculation mm -hmm. for new cost structure and for new fixed costs. So now my new fixed costs for company one prime here, will be 7,200 plus this 10%, right? Mm -hmm. This will be 920. And new marginal costs will be 9. Mm -hmm. Fixed cost of second company will be 5,000 plus 20 percent. Yeah? It is 6,000. And marginal cost here will be 8, right? Mm -hmm. Now we find new equilibrium for the firm one so it will be 100 minus q1 plus half of p2 equal to 9 from here we derive in the same way yeah we express q then we go back to the one function and find price best response curve 54.5 plus p2 over 4 by the way guys this is something that I solved myself, and I'm very bad at calculations. <laughs> so if some, some of you have gone through that, and if you have different answers, tell me, OK? Um, then firm two. You are doing the same which you have done in the part H. Yeah, exactly. Look. But I have here marginal just cost different cost. marginal costs. Yeah. So it's right the same, mm -hmm, and that's why I, I get something different here. So for firm two, it will be 75. So I get I take this marginal revenue. Minus Q2 plus half of P1. But now instead of 10, I take this 8. Mm -hmm. And in the end, I get best response curve equal to 41.5 plus P1 over 4. Mm -hmm. So these are new two best response curve, and we expect to get different uh, equilibrium now, right? Uh, Nash equilibrium. 
what I have got. Not very beautiful numbers, but still. That was 69.2 for firm 1. And for firm 2, it was 58.8. Mm -hmm. With this, I have got new Qs. Q1 is equal to 120.4. And Q2 equal to 0.1.6. Okay, immediately, if we look at these two numbers, what we have got. So look, the price of both companies have gone a little bit lower, yeah? Just, just some marginal. And the quantity produced increased just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we cannot actually expect any huge uh, difference in profits, especially if we take in, into account that in first case, profit one was equal to profit two and equal to zero. Mm -hmm. Now with these big investments, or 20%, we can expect that we should get something negative. Still, if we calculate profit one, would be 124 to 69.2 minus 9 and minus new fixed costs, 7920. So I got minus 671.92. And for the second company, it was minus 838 minus 72. Mm -hmm. So, will this strategy increase profits for the two companies? Okay, not really. Mm -hmm. Not the most successful strategy. The profits get negative. So, now we are done with C, right? Part D. just to have all the numbers on the one place. Right. Company two, in addition to investing in productivity, also invests in extra 10% of fixed cost in marketing and changes the demand function to something new. Yeah? Is this a, a successful strategy? How will profit change if company one also invests the same amount in marketing and we are back to the demand function we started with? So actually, part D includes two problems, right? The first one is to look what if we change only this part, right? And change the demand functions. Another one will be to get back to initial demand functions and calculate something for new cost structure, right? Mm -hmm. No, look, uh, there is a word extra, extra, extra 10. The new would be yeah. 50%. Oh, I would say, okay, my immediate response was that uh, 10 in, be in beginning and then 10 extra. No, mm, not at all. If it was called said just also invest 10% of 10% fi of more or something like that, it would be, I would then take it as 10% of new fixed costs. In this case, for me, it's more or less understandable that it should be like uh, the previous one. But on the other hand, um, in both cases, it will not be counted as a mistake in your exam. Okay, that's you know, really, I mean, people who, who grade exams, they're reasonable. Uh, they understand that if you understand very well the logic, nobody will punish you severely uh, for the fact that you are not able to use calculator, for example. Yeah, yeah you see. So don't be worried th that much about these minor details. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it can change all the reasons after. Mm -hmm. You think so. Instead of 6,500, it will be 6,600. It will change many things. Change profit. A little bit, but only marginally. Yeah, but the, uh, the, ma the major result will be the same. But like in the exam, you should specify then, okay, we understand this 10% as being 10% of this one. No, if you just write 6,000, 
600, I will understand. I was like, okay, what should I do? Which one should I take? It's called, I didn't find it. Well, okay, you and an analyst. You just, what you decide is right, then it's right. Okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, D. Um, now, fixed cost two of demand two of uh, firm two is 6,500. 6, and we keep fixed cost of firm one just the same, right? Um, marginal cost, cost of firm two is still nine, um, still eight, right? And marginal cost of firm one is nine. Mm -hmm. And here we have two different demand functions. 180 minus 2P1 plus P2 and Q2 is equal to 170 minus 2P2 plus P1. Mm? How the uh, well, it was 5,000 in the beginning. Then they invest 20%. This is 6,000. And then 10% more. So it will be 30%. So yeah, sure, but like, OK. I don't see actually the difference. OK, you can, if you want to, you can use this 600, 6,600, but it will not change the outcome. And as I understand the topic, uh, the problem formulation, it will be like that. Hmm? Uh, do you want me to go through the calculations again to find Nash equilibrium? Or it's okay if I just write the outcome? Okay? Um, well, I will at least write my best response curve curves. over 4 and P2 will be 46.5 plus P1 over 4. Have any, anyone got the same? I can only hope that this is correct. Yeah. Um, and then my equilibrium prices will be um, P1 equal to 65.2 <coughs> and P2 equal to 62.8. Mm -hmm. With this I get new quantities. It will be 112.4 and Q2 is equal to 109.6. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the numbers before that, um, we have increased the quantity produced or say market share of the second company quite significantly, right? We increase its price. Um, the production and, and um, price of the first company has decreased quite significantly actually as well. Mm -hmm. So this 10% of investments of fixed costs now make some more uh, considerable difference. Mm -hmm. So we can expect that something changed more. In this case, I have got profit of first company with these fixed costs equal to minus 1603.12 and profit two um, is equal to minus 493.92. So with this new uh, investment, what the second company got it managed to decrease significantly the profit of its rival, yeah, 1,000 less of profit, and just uh, increased a bit the profit of itself, but still it is negative. Mm -hmm. This is what we get here. Then uh, next part of part D, how will profit change if company one also invests the same amount in marketing and we are back to the one function we started with. So now we say that we have these fixed costs for firm two, this marginal cost for firm two, but now fixed cost of company one uh, will be to add 
more 720 to this amount and it will be no it's not right I made a mistake somewhere mm, so it will be um, right should be like that no the same amount in marketing yeah it should invest 500 so this will be 8420 mm -hmm. and marginal cost will again be the same it will be 9 and then we just get back to this solution right because we have uh, initial demand function functions two of them so it means uh, no, not here. We will be here, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have these demand functions, but we have these costs. Mm -hmm. So we can just take these prices, these quantities, and calculate new profit. Mm -hmm. Right? So here I have got profit one equal to minus eleven thousand seventy one ninety two, and profit two was minus eight three eight seventy two. So by this new investment, firm one managed to um, increase a little bit profit, but still negative. And this guy, what uh, got exactly what was before, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, I will erase this part, okay? Now, part E, in a last strategic decision to try to increase profits, so they are more or less desperate in this point, yeah? Company 1 tries to increase prices first, and we have a sequential game. Illustrate this game with a decision tree, and try to find the Nash equilibrium. Mm -hmm. So this is part E. Again, demand functions is the uh, initial ones. Up to this point, I will have fixed fixed cost of firm one equal to this 20, right? And fixed cost of company two will be 6,500. Um, at this moment, I have a sequential move game. Yeah. So now I'm solving a stackle, finding a stackleback equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Uh, last time we discussed, what should I do? Uh, right, and who is the follower now? This is company two. Mm -hmm. So I have found that already somewhere here. Right? It should be uh, mm -hmm. this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have it already. I don't have to go through that again. Because this is this uh, almost this cost structure, but I have changed just my fixed costs. But it's not relevant to this. Mm -hmm. So I just use this one. Reaction curve of the follower is 41.5 plus P1 over 4. Mm -hmm. Then what I do with this reaction function? I know that company 1 has nothing to respond. Mm -hmm. Nothing to respond to. Therefore, it just takes this reaction function. With the demand yeah, demand just take it and insert into the demand function. So right here, this is firm one. What it does? I take this demand curve. So this will be Q1 equal to 200 minus 2P1 and plus just this thing. Mm -hmm. 41.5 plus P1 over 4, right? Um, from here I get 7 over 8 P1 is equal to um, 
Yeah, right. Equal to 241.5 minus Q1. Then I get P1 equal to 276 minus 8 over 7 Q1. Mm -hmm. When I have this inverse demand function, simplified finally, or residual demand function, I can apply twice a steep rule. Then my marginal revenue will be 276 minus 16 over 7 Q1. Mm -hmm. Now I equate it to marginal cost, and it is equal to 9. From here, I can find um, I can find Q. Q1 will be 1, 6. Then I take this quantity, substitute it to the price, uh, to demand function, and I find price of a liter. It will be 142.5. Then from here, I take this price, substitute it to the direction curve of firm 2. Yeah? And I get it. The price is equal to 77,125. Mm -hmm. uh, then I take these two prices, this one, this one, substitute it here and I get quantity produced by second company, 138.25. Yeah. So now I have both prices and both quantities, mm -hmm. and I can find new profits. Um, so I have got 15,594.6 say 67 minus these uh, fixed costs. So at least there is something positive here. Mm -hmm. And for the second case I got minus 6500 and again it's something positive. So it looks like Stackelberg game works better in this case, right? Mm -hmm. Is it a game with this game? So what is important to note here is that, well, even though we haven't gone through the example with Stackelberg game for Bertrand settings with differentiated products in the handbook, but you see that the method works. So this is actually pretty much the same story as with number of companies. You should always think about the method at all. Yeah, what do we do? For example, in Stackelberg game, it doesn't matter which game we actually play. Is it Cournot game or this is Bertrand game? Mm -hmm. What we do, we simply follow the logic. OK, well, there is a follower. That means I have to find his reaction function. Then I take this reaction function. Uh, I put it in the demand of the, f of the price leader. And that's it. And then I, I go uh, like always, say, if I have um, many companies, uh, or if even though we went only through examples uh, with two companies, I can do just the same with three companies. Look, in s even here with Bertrand game with differentiated products, I can have a third company. Like Q3 will be equal to something, and here I will have three prices. Mm -hmm. Though it looks scary, but the method, the logic works again. What I do, I simply find all my reaction functions. Or actually, I can even skip this step. I only want to solve a system of linear equations mm -hmm. to find three uh, new prices. And that's it. So don't be terrified if you suddenly meet something that was not exactly like uh, in the handbook or what we did on the blackboard. Mm -hmm. Just try to apply the overall logic. Mm -hmm. Uh, F, and this is one of these cases when we have to think sort of out of the box, right? Uh, for some reason or time, we will have a shift in demand without increasing capacity. And the new game changes to a Cournot game. Um, so you can imagine now that, well, I have a Cournot game. Yeah, right, yeah. OK. 
okay, I see. Here? So, yeah, right. Zero, four. It, make, it means that I made a mistake somewhere with calculations. So don't believe me then. <laughs> um, there's some, some problems here. This is not right, this is not right. It's the same. Yeah. Well, mm, then probably I erase more or less all of that, except of this part, right? Okay, we assumed that in Bertrand game with homogeneous product. Yes. Here we have Bertrand game with differentiated product. It's another model. This is the model from chapter 13, I guess. Yeah? Yes. This is a chapter of differentiated products. So just another model. So if we have three firms and having the different marginal cost. In Bertrand game. Yes. And then we will find out the uh, reaction function of three firms. Well, okay, it depends on uh, whether it's model with differentiated products or homogeneous products. If it's homogeneous products, what you will do? Price equal, equal to marginal cost. And now think about that. Say, I have two companies with marginal cost equal to 10, and one company with marginal e cost equal to 20. What will happen? I have a Bertrand game, and the company with uh, marginal cost equal to 20 just drops out. Yeah, and then the other two share the market. Yeah, it's very simple. Yeah, exactly. Last question in compulsory exercise. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, by the way, you know what? Uh, when we met this exercise once in my group, we had only one student who, who managed to solve it. So you're really smart. You did. You did that. <laughs> okay. What is going on here? Yeah. Right. So what is interesting now? Um, okay, it looks like made a mistake again here. Okay, for some reason, so over time, we have a shift, shift in demand without increasing capacity. And the game changes to Cournot game. What is particular about this Cournot game? What is different from everything that we solved before? The fact that it is for the first time Cournot game with differentiated products. You see, yeah? How can we, okay, first of all, like this technical difference between games with homogeneous products and games with di uh, differentiated products. If there is a homogeneous product, we have um, demand function one for two companies. We only have one demand function and total Q, total production for both, yeah? <laughs> if we have differentiated products, it is always like that. We have always two demand functions. Mm -hmm. This is the first thing that should tell you, OK, it means that this, they are differentiated. Why so? Look at this demand function. What it means is that, OK, it, de it depends on the price of first product, but as well, it depends on the price of second product. But this dependence is twice larger than this one. Because it means that there are some like uh, loyal customers. Mm -hmm who will always buy, okay, who will, anyways, even though the price goes up a little bit, they will still prefer this product, just because it's some specific features. And only if the price goes up that much that they start to think that probably I have to switch to another product, then it uh, changes the demand. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we have this asymmetric influence of two products. Mm -hmm. That's why it is differentiated. So this is for the first time when we get Cournot game with two demand functions. Everything that we solved before was for one. Mm -hmm. So now we have to think, OK, what, what should I do? Again, I should do just the same, apply the overall logic. Mm -hmm. 
So in order to play Cournot game, even with differentiated products, I should find dependence relationship between Q1 and Q2. Mm -hmm. And this would be my two reaction curves. Uh, when I come to this point, everything else is just simple. I find Nash equilibrium, prices, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So then my question is, well, how can I arrive to relationship between two Qs? Solving the, this exercise, again, I made a mistake already, and I have seen it. I saw it already. What I did here, I solved the initial game. So just not to be lost in calculations, we will solve example that I created. <laughs> I got, I solved it with these marginal costs. But it will not change things much, right? Mm -hmm. So my idea was the following. How can we approach a game of this type? Ah, yeah, the, right. That's why I decided to take this. Mm -hmm. Because I have to, and we have the same demand function marginal cost. Right, thanks. So that was not a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hopeless, at least, yeah? Ah, uh, what would be your suggestions? How can I try? Where to start with? Hmm? Finding prices, then substituting the demand function. Okay, I would do even differently, probably, but uh, probably this is the right way. But still, I can try to find inverse demand function, just the same as we did, like uh, with uh, identical products. Mm -hmm. I want to try. Uh, I want to express my demand such that my price will be on the on left hand side, uh, side, and quantities will be on the right hand side. Look about the initial, like simplest setting of Cournot game with homogeneous products. What you had it was like p equal to 100 minus q1 minus q2, right? I want to get something like that. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I want to rearrange stuff here such that I have something like that. Mm -hmm. How I do that? Say here I have my p1. What if I express it from here and substitute here? Mm -hmm. Say p1, this p1, is equal to q2 minus 150 minus 2p2, right? So now look. No, plus, plus two, right? So if I now take this expression and put it here, it will, uh, what I will get will be Q1 that depends on P1, no, oh, depends on P2 and Q2, yeah? So you see, it feels like now I can find uh, dependence of P1, no, oh, P2 from two quantities, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to have an equation where we'll have only one price and two Qs, right? Mm -hmm. So if I take this one, I will get, and okay, take this equation and substitute to the first one. So it will be Q1 equal to 200 minus 2, I put it here, will be Q2 plus 2P2 minus 150 plus P2. And then if I play with this sufficient time, I arrive to this. 500 over 3 minus 2 thirds Q2 and minus 1 third Q1. Mm -hmm. So now it looks like something that is at least more convenient. Mm -hmm. And now I have to find the same stuff for the first firm. Mm -hmm. I do the same. I take this P2, express it from, the, uh, from this uh, equation, and insert it to this one. Mm, so just other way around. And I will get price for the first product equal to 550 over 3 minus 2 thirds Q1 minus Q2 over 3. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. I will after break, okay? okay. <laughs>